Hickok 45 here. Got out the old 92 Beretta 92 FS. Let's take a couple shots with it. You want to? Let's go across the hill. Did I miss or did I hit? I got a big mag. You know what I need? I need a bigger gun. Let's see if we can find one. Yeah, the same magazine. Look at this. This is made by Beretta as well, it looks like. CX-4 Storm? Hmm. Have I ever heard of that? <laughs> I think I have. Let's try it with this. Yeah, that's more like it. That's what I wanted to hear. How about the red one over there? How about another red one on the left? How about a gong? Yeah, that's more the ticket. This is the ticket. I better leave it bowl. Let's do some bowling. Oh, missed that one. Got that one. Got that one. How about a red? <laughs> yeah. I found that I needed really, if you're going to go bowling with it, you need to turn up the uh, red dot a little bit. So yeah, the CX-4 Storm Chapter 2, uh, mostly shooting. You have seen the, the first video, I'm sure. Actually, some of you might not have been born during the first video. I, I forget the year. Uh, I think it was eight or nine years ago that we did the, the first video with the CX-4 Storm. It was so long ago. In fact, I looked at the first part of the video, forgot the year, 2011 maybe? It's been a long time. Uh, maybe not that long ago. And uh, and it was a T&E gun, testing evaluation gun, that we got on request from Beretta and then sent back to them. And wow, it goes back to when we were doing that. I was, wow, I didn't remember that. And that's why I think in one of the videos I mentioned about maybe tempted to buy it and send a check instead of send the gun back. Anyway, uh, uh, I have looked at these things and you see them around uh, from time to time. And I always hearken back. There's something in the back of my mind uh, about that first one that we got and, and fired uh, that I liked. I liked it. Okay, there were a couple of negatives but I just liked it. And it's always been in the back of my mind. Isn't that beautiful? The sound of gunfire. And it's not even me firing. I love it. I love it. Uh, and so uh, uh, I saw Bud's had some. I said, oh man, that'd be fun to shoot one of those again. I looked at, we'd just done one or, or two videos, maybe a close up and then the main video was great. We haven't even done a chapter two, a range two. We haven't done a, a serious woods walk with one or any of that kind of stuff. Let's get one and shoot it some more because I just wanted to. Not because we've had a thousand requests for it. I just wanted to. Is that okay? Will you forgive me? Uh, so this is a chapter two. I, I will definitely link. You tell me if I forget because uh, I took it apart. I don't know if I need to do that again. Show you how it comes apart. You just knock out this pin, pull it out, and uh, and then if this pulls off and the bolt slides out. It's all just very, very simple. Everything's reversible. You can uh, reverse the mag release so it's fully ambidextrous. It can be right or left. Same with the bolt handle. In fact, I moved the bolt handle this morning. I had it on the right. I'm still not sure which I, where I preferred. I guess on the left, but it was kind of handy. I, I shot it a fair amount with it on the right. I just put it up against my shoulder and kind of, you know, just, I don't know, it just felt easier in some ways, except you have to take your hand off the, the grip and the trigger. You know, if you're in a serious firefight, you need to work the bolt. You know, you'd probably be more tactical to have it on the left. But uh, so you can do that. You can even remember, I went over this in the first video, you can actually change the, uh, the extractor from the right to the left and all that kind of thing. So it, it is very ambi, about as ambi as you can get, okay? And uh, the other one we did was black. And uh, I like this one better, I think, in terms of the looks of it. And let's put some fresh ammo in it, okay? It's got a stiff safety. I tell you the negatives uh, for me as I've, I've been shooting this a fair amount, okay. And then one of the differences in the chapter two that make it a little different is the color of the firearm, and that, that makes a huge difference I've noticed in recoil 
and uh, and then how fast it will fire. It's uh, incredible the difference that makes. All right, all right. That was a joke. So that makes no difference in any of that, does it? But I put a red dot on this one. That is different from the first video with one of these. And uh, one of the reasons for that was, is that both John and I uh, had difficulty uh, getting down. It has pretty good sights and I can, I can do okay with it. You just, it's just getting your jaw down on that stock and getting down on those sights is a little uh, problematic. Okay, I need to take a Dremel tool and uh, carve out some of that. Uh, and I've seen other people that said they had the same problem with it. And I thought, well, this would be a cool gun to put a red dot on anyway. And uh, so that's what I did. And of course that brings it up just enough to where that's not an issue at all. So uh, if you're thinking about one of these, I would shoulder one, get your face down on it. If, for example, if you, you want one, but you do not want to put a red dot on or an optic of any kind. You want to use the, the basic sights, iron sights, which are good sights, by the way. Uh, you really do need to shoulder one because you might have the same issue. It may not be enough to prevent you from wanting it, uh, but I would suggest you, you check that out. Okay. That was the biggest negative for us. And, and really, I don't know that we had any other, any of it's a really kind of a quirky, uh, weird firearm in some ways and so much polymer, it's blowback, so you do know when you're firing it, you get a little bit, and I put this on here to extend it. It's not like it, you get massive recoil with a uh, nine millimeter, but this added length really uh, helps me a lot. As you know, I do that all the time. I'm gonna... All right, let's take some shot. And the safety is really stiff. Now that would loosen up. I could put some ballast on it. It's really stiff. Okay, otherwise I like it. Uh, what am I going to shoot? All right. <laughs> I wounded him and then took him out before he fell. <laughs> really nice. And that watermelon's bothering me. Oh, what did I do? Did I run out of ammo? I did. The bolt didn't stay back, did it? That was a bad series. Yeah, okay. That's good. Well, I mean, it's not good. That's the uh, mag that came with it, too. Okay. Now, we've been shooting it a lot. They haven't cleaned it, but uh, that's the mag that comes with it. Uh, so, now I'm corn fused. I think it just has one mag that comes with it. It was that one. Okay? Just so you know, this will go back to Budge for the e-gunner. I bought these. I'm glad that happened so I can remind you. Oh, aim point. To come off my sight. I don't know if that was on, but uh, but anyway, that's my, and also it doesn't come with this sight. That's my sight, <laughs> by the way. Oh, you know what? I think that was a cover on the front. Oh, that's what it was. Yeah, it's a cover popped off there, didn't it? Okay. Uh, so the uh, this comes with it. Uh, I have added, of course, the aim point. That's my aim point. And then I bought these three magazines. I told that story in a Sunday video. Every Sunday morning, I post the Sunday shoot around, by the way. And I catch some of you not watching them because you'll ask questions I've answered in that, those videos. Because uh, they're always timely. I always do those, you know, the week, just a day or two before Sunday rolls around. And uh, about how I had a bunch of mags, you know, for the Beretta. And we did this video on the first one years ago in a bag and I just couldn't locate them. They'll turn up here around here somewhere. Uh, so I bought three more just because I really was looking forward to shooting this. I got frustrated. I couldn't find those magazines. And uh, so anyway, I've got some, I'll have a lot of mags when those turn up, won't I? Okay, so these are 30 round mags. Okay, now so far, uh, that's the first time it's not locked the bolt back. Uh, I think I've used that one enough to discover that one way or the other. All right, so what do we shoot? Oh yeah, I was trying to shoot the watermelon. Yeah. That's what you don't want to do, put them all in the same hole if you want to blow something up, right? <laughs> Two liter time. That's a nice uh, red dot. I've learned to like red dot sights. You may have noticed that. <laughs> Go 
back to, oh, let's try, I uh, wonder if it'll knock over a pig over there in the middle of the field. Yep, it will. How about that red plate in the middle? Nice. Nice. <laughs> I apologize. It's hard to miss with this firearm. <laughs> I, I won't be missing a lot, okay, because it's it's hard. You gotta work at it. You really do. Now as sure as I say that, watch me start missing everything. Oh no. Especially if I've not smoked any pot yet. Yeah, really. Boom! This is a fun gun to pop. I'm gonna shoot the cowboy's hat. What'd I tell you? Shot his hat. That little, I sit the plates. Get them all ringing. How about uh, that uh, cinder block over there on the barrel? Boom. How about that swinging plate over there on the hill? Ah, how about that uh, turkey up there on the top row in the middle? Yeah. How about that pig up there on the top row on the left? Yeah, how about that gong? <laughs> how about this stop sign? <laughs> I got to hold it too low. I'll tell you, uh, that is cool. I'll, I'll keep this short. Let me load one more little mag. I think, in fact, I may not have to do that. I have, uh, yeah, this is the mag from the, the Beretta. I had loaded it as well. Again, just to show you the compatibility. Uh, it'll take a standard 17, 16, whatever your round magazine that uh, that it uses. And, uh, you know, this thing is, is pretty cool. Let me uh, get my ears back on. One thing John and I noticed with the other one, I'm going to leave one ear out and take a shot. Yeah, uh, I mean, it is 9 millimeter uh, carbine, but for some reason, there's something about the polymer in the gun or, or something it's not as loud as it ought to be. I don't know what that is. Now, I don't recommend you don't use ears. I got my ears in now, but there's something about the firearm that, that's not as loud as it ought to be. We noticed that with the other one. I'm gonna go back over there and uh, pop that uh, buffalo. Yeah, I knew that was too low the first shot. Sweet, sweet. Thing. I'm sorry, it's just hard to miss. <laughs> it's just a great little planker, and it could be a very nice, uh, I guess, home defense, you know, carbine. Uh, and uh, there's probably some things I didn't mention in this video. It's got a metal rail and, uh, uh, you know, totally ambidextrous, your your metal sides fold down, the things I pointed out, push this button and the rail comes out, you can push that, that rail, pull it out, put something on it, you can attach rail pieces on the side here, of course. Uh, if it's something you think you would have interest in, you know, check out all the videos on it. There's a lot of them out there now. It's been around, I think, since the early 2000s. And it's uh, it's one of those firearms that it's, it's uh, I think you either love it or you hate it. Uh, or you're somewhere in between. How's that? Uh, a lot of polymer. It even has a polymer hammer and just different things. But the thing works. The thing works. As I understand, there are a lot of mods that, that people do to them. You know, to get rid of the plastic hammer. Uh, if it's a piece you really don't like, or if you really don't like polymer, you call it what? Plastic, right? <laughs> it sounds worse. Um, but. I have this, uh, I still have this thing in the back of my mind that I, uh, I may end up with one. I mean, I like them. I really do. I think we bragged on, on the very first video, uh, pointed out the negatives and you know, the red dot, uh, does away with, uh, the biggest negative for me. And I don't know, they're just nifty little carbines. Uh, I can't think of another pistol caliber carbine that I like better, tell you the truth, uh, and it's just utterly reliable. 
So you got that weird kind of grip, and I think all that's so they could import it and everything. Uh, but I don't know, it, it doesn't bother me too much. You can get your hand on it, it's not in the way. You know, some of these where you got that, that kind of hole, it's small and it's very, very awkward. Uh, it, and it doesn't prevent me from working the mag release. Now, some people it does because it just, it just does. You know, you have to grab it and try that to, to understand that fully. But uh, pretty cool is the S4 Storm. They come in, I think, different calibers. You can, uh, uh, you can get them that will take the PX4 magazines. This one is set up to take the uh, 92, as you saw, uh, magazines, the Beretta 92. But you can also, you know, uh, get one that will, I, I think maybe, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, you can modify it with a sleeve and maybe a different mag uh, release to where even this one would take the PX4 uh, magazines. Not sure about that, but I've, I've seen them listed in 40 caliber, in 45 ACP, even 9 by 21 And uh, so it is a blowback, you recall from the first video. It's got a big, heavy bolt in it. And so you can feel that as with any blowback operation, they always have a bigger, heavier bolt. But it's nothing, you know, that's going to bother you. Uh, I, I just like it. I have to say, it, it could be I have to have one, you know, because I don't really have enough firearms. But this is cool. This is cool. A lot of people would say there's no place for a pistol caliber carbine. Just get a real chambering, 5.56, 308, whatever, you know. Uh, but if you've ever shot uh, firearms like this, lever actions in pistol caliber uh, you don't have to be convinced that they're they're great and they also have a place in this world so i'm glad you came out today to to participate and to uh partly to see me slobbering over one of these things again i, I do like them and I'm, I'm glad that we got this one back from buzz and you'll see over the <laughs> over the weeks several videos with this gun because we, we've uh, we, you know we plan to do several videos with it. So whoever ends up with this thing on e-gunner, it's going to have a, a lot of airtime you know, on our channel uh, over the next six months for sure. Because uh, I, I just want to take it through everything we do. I want to test it in the woods in survival mode. I want to do even a small game uh, hunt with it. Maybe a large big game hunt. Range two, you name it. We may even shoot walnuts off the trees with it. No, that would not be safe. No, I'm glad to have you all out this uh, evening and uh, share the fun with us, and we appreciate your support. Life is good. Uh, fire. It's a long walk from where I had to shoot that. Oh, man. Oh, hey, didn't see you guys there. Since you're here, I want to let you know about our friends over at Talon Grips and Ballastall, talongungrips.com. Check out everything they have over there. You can get lots of different grips, the stick-on grip textures for your handguns and rifle grips, so go check them out. Also, Ballastall, they're a firearms lubricant or anything else you might need lubricating. Uh, it's water-soluble and non-toxic. Been using it on the compound and cleaning all of our guns. It's a cleaner and a lube for over 10 years. So, Ballastall, Talon Grips, definitely check both of those companies out. And also, while you're on the internet, don't forget to go to Hickok45.com. You can also find us on Facebook, Hickok45, Twitter, Hickok45, Instagram, The Real Hickok45, and also I have an Instagram page where I post behind the scenes stuff and different things like that. John, J O H N underscore H I C K O K 45 on Instagram. And uh, the next thing you have to do is watch more videos.